So there was a special advanced preview screening of Strange Darling Tonight, which had a live Q&A afterwards that was hosted by Carla Gugino, 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 I think is how you say her name. I always forget how to say her freaking name. Um, I don't know why she hosted it. It was kind of random for me. I know Willa and her worked on The Fall of the House of Usher uh, recently, so... Maybe that's the connection. Yeah. I was looking to see if she produced it or had any hand in it. She definitely doesn't act in it. So I don't yeah. know why she, she was the one that did it. But she did. Uh, and the director was there. As well as the cinematographer, which was Giovanni Ribisi. This is his first film as a cinematographer. Uh, I know of no actors turned cinematographer with uh, that pedigree to mm -hmm. his name. So that's an interesting one. They usually go to director or writer or something like that but not cinematographer uh and this film stars willa fitzgerald as well as kyle gallner uh this is when i went into uh mostly blind i kind of knew a vague outline of what this was and i definitely recommend going into it blind if you can mm. if uh you don't want to know anything about it i definitely would say uh avoid it any kind of uh you know, trailers or, or synopses or whatever. So uh, I, I think we'll start with our thoughts. Then we'll kind of maybe get into a plot synopsis mm. after um, just for people who want to be kind of more sold on it. Uh, these kinds of films, I do like to leave a little more spoiler free at the beginning and then we'll get into it uh, as we go on. Um, but anyway, so another one of those films that I kind of held my thoughts from Kaylee. Yeah, you and I uh, was very quiet after the film. Um. <laughs> okay, so my thoughts. Uh, this is shockingly like a contender for my number one film of the year. Oh, nice. Uh, I'm this, so glad you liked it. This blew me away. <laughs> uh, this was fucking phenomenal. This is like, you know, I don't know if I've given any five stars to a film this year, but this could be it for me. Mm. Um, so this is, yeah. I was really, really surprised with this one. Uh, I like Kyle Gallner a whole lot. Yeah. Right? So that's kind of what got me interested in this, mm -hmm. that it was that. And the fact that it had, like, an early screening and that it was part of our AMCA list. You know, we didn't Yay. have to pay extra <laughs> for it. So I was like, okay, fuck it. Let's just, let's go. Yeah. Let's see what it's about. You know, you got Alien Romulus tomorrow. And we're like, you know, this will be a, a little palate cleanser kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know what this is. Um but I, I'm curious on your thoughts, and then uh, we'll talk more about it. But holy shit, what a fucking film. Yeah, I loved it, too. I thought it was amazing. I think there's so much to talk about with the movie as far as the plot and the characters, but then also the way that it looks and like the sound design and the style of it all. It was fantastic, as you said, phenomenal. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot to go into. But, yeah, I think like one of the big things for me is how beautiful it looked yeah it's so this is shot yeah go ahead 35 millimeter yeah. uh film so it, it has that it just looks better it always looks better when it's on film mm -hmm. <laughs> every every movie that i've seen on film like there's definitely a richness there that just doesn't happen when it's digital um so i really loved that but yeah, everything about the the movie was wonderful. You know, the director said something in the live Q&A. Mm. Um, I actually had to go back to get my hat because we left before it was over. And while I was in the theater grabbing my hat, it was more towards, I think, the tail end of it because we stayed for a little bit of it. Um, he had talked about, Carla had asked him about the fact that it was shot on film. Mm. And he had said that one of the things that he really liked about it was the challenges of film mm -hmm. actually made him feel like he wanted or that it made him more disciplined mm -hmm. because when you're like burning film yeah versus just like sd cards yeah. that you can just like erase and and refill and whatever so there's there's this kind of like urgency behind mm -hmm. it of like we got to get this right so it makes it feel like there's more pressure to it mm -hmm. so there's like more thought put into everything like mm -hmm. we better get this right this is on film I thought that was really an interesting point uh, to think about when it comes to film, because I don't, you know, most people don't shoot on film anymore. 
Uh, and the fact that he wanted to do that shows that he's you know one of these kind of purists when it comes to cinema, um, which I respect. And you know, with a film like this, I'm glad that the film ended up being so good because you know somebody who wants to shoot on film, I, I have no doubt that adds a whole another layer of um, you know budget mostly. Sure. Yeah. Uh, where the where the studios are like, mm, you really want to do that? That's gonna up our cost so much um but yeah getting away from all of that so standout here for sure is willa Mm -hmm. um maybe my favorite performance of the year just phenomenal all all around and there's some stuff she does in this movie that is just wild um and kyle's great you know he he he's wonderful he definitely plays a similar character in a lot of movies, but he's so good at it that I don't really care. Um, and this feels... So, I guess, if I was to try, without too much spoilers, to compare it to anything, this feels like... It definitely feels like a Kyle Gallner film, mm. right? Because we've gotten a couple films that he's made recently, like The Passenger and Mother May I, mm-hmm. that have this kind of, like somber indie feel yeah. that um has a unique feel and it's like a very organic feeling to it mm-hmm. it doesn't feel all that theatrical yeah um and it has like a quentin tarantino uh, feel to it as well there's a flavor of that going on in the writing um but man just i have so many things mm-hmm. and, and when you're talking about no spoilers that's tough but Another thing that I loved and really complimented this film, and then I'll, I'll shut up for a second because <laughs> you can talk, but uh, the soundtrack yeah, yeah. complements this film so wonderfully. It does. Not only just because the it, it, it matches the tone and like the, the beauty of the movie, but it also lyrically mm-hmm. really amps up the like payoff of all the scenes and and everything that's going on within the film. I just, it feels like the soundtrack was written for the movie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I'm sure it was not. I'm sure these are all songs that I've heard before or or existed before the film, but man, it just felt like they were there on purpose. And uh, wow. Just, yeah. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I think that there's sometimes like movies you'll watch where it just is like, random songs put in like a filler sequence or something and it doesn't have any connection to the story and that's definitely not the case with this film everything is very intentional and like on purpose yeah and that comes across in the movie very well um yeah it's it's just it is really hard to talk about without spoilers because it's a movie that like i don't want to spoil for people i want them to go in and see it and like experience it without having like an idea of what's going to happen because I think that that enhances the experience. Mm -hmm. Um, But I mean, it's, yeah, everything, like the performances are really, as you said, Willow's performance is like the standout for sure. I would say that it like, it rivals a lot of the great performances that we've like, you know, like last year and the last couple years as far as like female leads go. I think it's definitely going to be iconic um but i think that this is a film that's like i don't know it, it's interesting i could see this film really taking off and getting like a huge audience to love it because it's just so like masterfully done but i could also see some i mean obviously every film has people that don't like it but it just depends because it's it's not an art house film but it has like some artsy qualities to it that i know turn some people off which is fine i don't know it's just that's that's one thing Maybe to point out, but I think that it's still got a very straightforward. Well, it has a, it has a clear plot and story that's happening. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think if you're a fan of Kyle Gallner's work, oh yeah, like in the indie realm, yeah, you know, not like Scream Five, no, like, or Smile yeah. or something like that. I'm talking more of the the Passenger, the, the passenger for sure. Mother May I, yeah. as I had said. Um, then I think this is this is gonna fit that work very very well yeah and uh kyle's definitely become probably like my most 
looked to mm. Guy in horror now. Mm -hmm. I don't know who, like, if I had a Scream King list, yeah. right? We, we always talk about the Scream Queens. But we really never talk about, like, the men in horror and, yeah. like, what guys are, are leading the charge acting-wise in horror. Um, I don't know why we don't do that, but I guess most of the films primarily focus on strong women performances or strong mm. female performances. Uh, but Kyle's definitely like that scream king uh, category where he just he's making so many great choices. Yes, you I know, agree. I he agree. gets cast in all of these fantastic films. You know, I, I haven't really seen him in anything that I haven't really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if he has a great fucking agent or if he's <laughs> just really good at reading scripts. Uh, as far as a plot synopsis goes. Uh, let's see what IMDB has to say because this is this is a difficult one. Uh, it's not loading because we haven't had the fucking internet <laughs> all day since about twelve hours now. We've been a, no internet. Yeah. Uh, nothing is what it seems when a twisted one night stand spirals into a serial killer's vicious murder spray. That's okay. good. Yeah, I yeah, like that. I guess. Um, I mean, that's that's basically it. Yeah, and and the film is. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to say anything else. No, I feel yeah, like we can't really say more. I'm going to leave more. it at that because I don't, I don't want to talk about... I was going to say some things, but now I'm just changing my mind. Um, so, yeah. Phenomenal. Really, really um, wonderful. I don't know where this would rank right now, but, mm. like, we'll see at the end of the year. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's, it's in... I mean, without a question, it's the top ten. Without question to me right now, it's probably oh. the top five, and it could... I could see it making its way. We'll see how the... There's so many movies left to go I know, this year. I know, right? We'll see how everything else pans out. But it's... But I is agree, it my number one sure. right now? Ooh, it's, it's close. <laughs> it's definitely it's close. A, a contender. I just loved it. I, yeah. I love every... I, I literally wouldn't change a thing about it. And I think yeah. that... There, I think there's so much to discuss here. There is right? really so many... Like, there's so many parts of the story and so many scenes... That are so packed full of like meaning yeah. that you can talk about that aren't like some of them aren't even with the main characters like side characters and stuff, which is just wonderful. Um, when you were talking about everything being very purposeful, yeah, I you know it's not only so much so that I'm like oh yeah I think so, no I know so because one of the other parts of the Q and A mm. was when uh, Giovanni Ribisi was up there. Uh, talking about the cinematography because he was asked about it, uh, obviously, since he's the cinematographer. And, all. <laughs> and uh, he had talked about how him and the director basically were working on the picture together, just them two at first for like the first like six months. Mm -hmm. And he said that was during COVID. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. COVID. Yeah. That's four or five years ago. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a meticulously crafted film yeah this is something that they worked and he said they drew the whole thing out on paper like storyboards everything really like got everything down and all of the the color choices mm -hmm. and all of the the lens work was all preconceived that they knew everything they were going to do when they sat down probably a lot of it because it had to do with you know the fact that it was being shot on film mm -hmm. But this is so expertly woven together because I was really, really like sucked into it and paying attention to every little thing. Yeah. And I feel like every piece of the puzzle is addressed here and that there's no continuity issues that I was that I kept looking for because mm. of how the story's told. Mm -hmm. And I was like Okay, like wow, I'm really impressed with this. Yeah, you know, uh, I got nothing, man. I, I really, I got <laughs> nothing to say bad about this film. I, I just think it's 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 such a wonderful piece of work, and I did not expect that going into this. I thought that this was just going to be a fun, like, thrilling mm -hmm. chase through the woods. That's what I thought. And when the film started. For the first 10 minutes or so, I was like, yeah, okay, that's what this is going to be. Yeah. 
But there was something that gave me an indication that it was going to be something a little different right out the gate that I was like, okay, maybe this is going to go maybe somewhat different than I thought. And then it didn't, like, for the first 10 minutes, I was like, okay, this is more of ex- pretty much what I expected. And then, holy shit. Yeah. Then we go. start to really change things up. And I'm like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, you know, and I wasn't. I wasn't shocked or super surprised by anything per se, because I, I kind of figured things out, but it didn't matter at all to me. Not no, one I think, bit. I think that it's a story that you can kind of like, you know, after maybe the first 10 minutes, like you said, you're paying attention and, you know, are an observant, like, viewer. Gore, yeah. yeah, that you're going to be like, oh, I, I do know where this is going. But that doesn't, like you said, it's just so expertly woven that I don't feel that that um, takes anything away from the film, like, at all. This is definitely a movie that, like, after it's been out for a little bit, um, I think we should totally do a spoiler discussion on after seeing it again and, you know, getting into it some more because I think people will really appreciate a spoiler discussion. Oh, 100%. But I don't want to do that now because it's, like, it's so new and I really want people to just go see it and, you know, find out for themselves. Yeah, this is the kind of film for me that is going to... W- I won't be surprised. In fact, I'm 100% positive. Like I saw the TV glow mm. from earlier this year. This is going to really, really resonate yes. with a certain audience. Yeah, for sure. And it's going to be like one of, if not their favorite film. Like yeah, they ever I could totally see that. That I is this totally kind of movie to me where I'm like, this is going to be a cult classic mm-hmm. where people are like, the certain crowd that it really lands with are going to be like, this is like a favorite film of all yeah. time for me. Well, that's why I think like Willa's performance is going to be so like iconic. Yes. Because it's really just like, I can't even, I don't even want to compare it to any, like I was going to compare it to some other performances, but I can't because I yeah. feel like those are spoilers. <laughs> kind of. Sure. So anyway. Right, we're done. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Go see it. We loved it. Obviously, if you can't tell. And, uh. Eh. <laughs> it's like a 2 out of 10 <laughs> go right. watch it and let us know what you think yeah definitely so. alright guys bye bye